Hello, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So, I've done a bit of science unlocking and whatnot, and decided to build another aircraft, a long distance aircraft this time. Um, the plane itself has about 250 kilometer range on it. It's a pretty long distance plane. Um, I didn't know the exact distance between KSC and the North Pole, so I decided. Let's go on a scientific long-distance mission and see if I can get some science from the North Pole. Um, at first, I thought it would be okay to, to do that kind of distance. It's The plane had a lot of fuel. Um, it flied really well. It flied? It flew? It, is that flewed? Flied? It flew? Flew, I think. Yes, anyway. Um, it flew really well. It, it was incredible. Um, I did manage to unlock SAS and whatnot, so with those unlocked, it was just a miracle to fly. It just worked out so well. Um, it was a pretty boring flight, though, I will admit. It was unbelievably boring. All I did was fly in a straight line in one way, uh, and then flew in a straight line back. I did a turnaround at some point as well, but it was um, it was good. The, the plane itself was really fun to fly. It responded really well, um, didn't go too fast, so it was pretty easy to control at all times. It was just, it was really good. I was surprised that I managed to, to build a plane like this with the part limits, but speaking of the part limits, I could only fit on two science modules, and I decided to go for repetitive ones. So I've unlocked the thermometer, and I've got mystery goo in the science service module as well. I've put those in there just to... I was hoping to get some science along the way, and I managed to get a couple of bits of the thermometers, but I couldn't get anything else aside from uh, the mystery group and landed back at KSC. So it was a bit of a trek to, to get there and back, but I managed to probably get about 15, 20 science. It really wasn't much at all. The the total flight time was about an hour and a half, so to come away with about 15 science, it really didn't work out to, for the time it took, so I'm a bit annoyed at that, but at the same time, I'm glad I did it, because now I know the plane can't make it to the North Pole, so I can go back and redesign it. I didn't want to go ahead and make a suborbital um, spacecraft, just for the fact that I didn't want to, well, I just didn't want to, I wanted to fly there and explore Kerb along the way. Um, given I have 700 hours in this game, I've never actually flown around Kerbin. I've always taken the fast approach and just gone straight to the destination, either by suborbital craft or hyper-editing myself to the other location. It, I never really explored it properly. Um, but it was really fun. It was really good scenery. It was, I found trees I didn't even know existed in KSP, um... Yeah, the, the scenery was just incredible. I don't know why I've never done that before. It was just... It was surreal. It was really, really amazing. Uh, but the entire flight, like I said, was just boring. It was just flying in a straight line. I had some music playing, which is why there's no audio in there. But the fun really kicked in when I was coming back from the, the long-haul flight... I didn't quite calculate my point of return correctly, and I came back with just enough fuel to land. I had about 40 seconds of flight time left, so I couldn't have timed it any better even with my point of return screw-up. Um, it became... As the plane burnt off fuel, it the center of mass shifted so much that it was becoming harder and harder to control. So I had to have the engine throttled up to maintain that that kind of airflow over the wing, so it did become really unresponsive at the end of the flight, but given how close we were to KSC near the end, I didn't really care that much. So long as I had enough thrust and fuel to, to make it down, I was happy. Um, I did add parachutes on there in case we ran out of fuel and crashed and whatnot, but I only used one of them to slow down right at the end here. And the landing itself was pretty stressful because I was worried I'd, I'd run out of fuel too early and just nosedive into the ground, but with the engine turned off, providing just that last little bit of thrust to be, get me down, it was it was incredible. And landing on one small wheel at the back there was even more stressful. I didn't want to lose any parts either. I wanted to just get on the ground and just get my science, all 15 of it. 
but landed really well, deployed the parachute, and yeah, it was a, a straightforward landing. I was really surprised at how well it actually landed, it, it was, how much fuel was left, but the amount of fuel had left was six units. That is ridiculous. That's about 35, 40 seconds of flight time left. I didn't expect it to make it back. I was really prepared to ditch it into the ocean somewhere, but I had no I, had, I didn't have any decouples on there to release the cockpit. I just had to I had to land it. I had no choice at all. But yes, that was the long distance plane. It flew really well and I'll probably use this in the future again for other scientific missions. Um, but yes, that is it for this episode, and I'll see you all next time.